Izzy, can you believe it? We have just come out of Judge Christopher Latham's court, Court 51 of the Central London County Court here uh, in the Royal Courts of Justice behind us. And I actually feel like I've been in a boxing match. I feel like we, but particularly you, were the ones that were on trial. Is that, how, how do you feel? I feel that I've been on trial. I feel that I have been just completely, um, yeah, just wiped out. Wiped out. I, you know, it, it has been really difficult feeling that your whole sense of being, your life, your beliefs has just been called into question and been basically just turfed out of court. And, and, and the sense of not knowing in a way, whether or not it's even allowed to have your beliefs now. I think what was quite extraordinary about this morning, because we, we saw this morning that Judge Latham had actually used, um, in, in his thinking, because he put it down in his judgment, the wrong statute and the wrong legislation Correct. around relationships and sex education and the policies around it. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it, that was a big thing in this whole thing because he deliberately um, decided that he was going to use whatever legislations that there were, whatever statutes were available. Well, he got the wrong one it, and it, then he decided to try and... Exactly, because yeah. he wanted to fit a narrative he and the narrative was to obviously to, to throw this out of court. And to... I think when you read the judgment, you felt that the judge essentially had an end goal in place and he's manipulated the facts to fit his end goal. That's correct. I mean, from the very beginning, I, I, I believe that the judge was even more angrier with me in particular um, than the school was. You know, he didn't want it to even get, he thought it was probably really ludicrous that it got this far. And therefore, none of this should have been, you know, even heard in court. And as he said, it, it was a su successful win for the school. And that's what he wanted it to be for the school from and, the very and, beginning. And just to get this back into its proper context, your five-year-old son, we sometimes joke that he's going to be graduating from university by the time we get justice right. in this case. But your five-year-old son, who was, this was now five years ago that this happened in 2018, your five-year-old son was being forced to participate in a gay pride parade at which the local MP came along and was tweeting about um, being proud to be at an in such an inclusive and diverse school. Um, the children were being taught about gay pride, being asked to go on gay pride. And the judge is saying that being, being told you have to go on such a parade doesn't affect, doesn't infringe your beliefs. In fact, it's not inconsistent with your beliefs, he says. I mean, the whole thing, not just about the, I mean, he was four at the time, not, uh, and, and the whole idea that a child as young as four years old should march in a, a, anything that involves sexuality, um, part of it being, you know, seen as inclusive and a celebration of diversity. But no means no. And if you feel as an adult who is acting in the best interest of your child... As a parent. As a parent. And as a, as a parent. As a Christian parent. <laughs> correct. You know, if you feel that that is not something that they should be forced to do, as, you know, nobody else would be forced to do this. I mean, let's take ourselves into to, to this. Would you, you know, march to something that you didn't agree to, regardless whether it was all happy and smiles and celebration of well, diversity? Essentially, the judge here is ruling that there was no opt-out. There's no opt-out for parents, because actually when it comes to uh, relationships education, relationships and sex education, Essentially, the children have to go along with it. Right. So, and again, and I say, at the time, there was no legislation. And even now, there's no legislation that any child should have to celebrate anything that they don't believe in. This is a school that gives ops out for many things, you know, including religious celebrations. And in this particular circumstance, there was no opt out. We don't know why, but the judge agreed with the school. And I think he went further than the school, to be honest. And I, I think that what has, has highlighted this is that I went in to highlight the, the issues with the school 
and the issues that parents face with schools, uh, with um, having the overall say of what happens with your child in school. And what the, this judge decided to do was not only highlight the fact that parents are not allowed to, to do this, but to make, you know, basically an example a big example of uh, and scare parents from doing this and this is what the, is so it, dangerous it's very scary isn't it and i think and on the face of it what he's was saying is your christian beliefs are uh, are not necessarily um in conflict with lgbt beliefs um and that um there was nothing inconsistent with your son going on this parade given the way in which you'd explain your beliefs uh, in court and that manifestation of those beliefs and manifestation in the pride is perfectly proper and appropriate and the school um, didn't need to give you any form of op opt out that's essentially what he's saying he's saying you will be compelled because he it was as if he's interpreting your faith for you yes your Christianity, I, yeah, um, yeah, and that it's not an appropriate manifestation to say that your child should be withdrawn I think throughout the trial, I think that was highlighted. I mean, for for parents to be put through such such questioning, such interrogation and abuse. I mean, to be honest, you know, I was abused within the the school system when I had issues. Well, with they what say was that you were on. pretty. This is what he 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 lands on this a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. He lands a lot on your emails and your demeanour at the school gate. Well, I think that we can tell because you wouldn't be here otherwise that you're pretty feisty, right? Correct. I, I, I agree that I can see right from wrong and yep. I can I will, you know, fight for my right to live within my truth because I find it important. Yep. Um how how I go about that is is I do things the correctly, I followed the correct procedures and I think what I can see here is that if people have a problem with you wanting to live within your beliefs and you don't accept what they throw at you, then you're, or, or, you know, you're deemed as a, a problem. You're tr deemed and, and, homophobic, transphobic, not inclusive, hateful. And I think, you know... And, and, and therefore, you know, quite rightfully banned from the school yeah. with, and taking my child with me at the same time. And it, it, like I said, the, the judge went further in, in this ruling that he told me what my beliefs were and told me that my beliefs um, you know, should be accepting of, of anything and everything and even questioned me, well, is that, am I not being un-Christian? Um, because he clearly has the, the ruling of what being Christian is. So he is, he is saying what a Christian is and what an appropriate manifestation of faith is. He's put that in the judgment, that's what we've got. Um, and we're going to appeal it, aren't we? We're going to appeal this because it's really... I want to say that at the time, so five years ago, when Isaiah was four coming up to five, the, 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 it wasn't just you, was it? There were a hundred parents that kept their children. Over a hundred. Over a hundred kept their children out of school on that day. But of course, it's part of the kind of understanding, the climate that means that you're the one that's still here five years later. That's right. I mean, it, it's the one that stands not the amount of people that had had an issue. I mean, I, I wasn't, I don't believe that anybody, you know, realistically can claim, you know, that this wasn't about what it was. This was about celebrating, you know, a lifestyle that we cannot ever affirm and celebrate. And it's ridiculous that we had to go to court to prove that, that that's what they were wanting to celebrate. And it's ridiculous that a judge could at the same time have you know two understandings that they were the school wasn't celebrating it but if they were celebrating it then you should just jump on board yes yeah, so, so, I think so that we wouldn't other, that we would not have been able to, to it, win it either wasn't way that the extraordinary thing <laughs> gay pride was no longer gay pride the, 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 the rainbow flag was no longer gay pride gay anthems were no longer gay no anthems. i mean the gay the, the 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 rainbow was even we had covid in there this was 2018 and and, yep. and you know the coronavirus was in 2020 i don't know why you know the rainbow was being assimilated with anything other than um, what gay, the, yes. what we knew what it was i mean and and the, the the problem that i have with this is that the school openly openly said that this was about LGBT pride and only when it came under fire decided to change its name and even emails that was clearly was presented. It was because of the power at the time, wasn't it? There were parents that were prepared at the time to say, we don't want this. 
and they then began to change the name of it. Change the name and there were secret emails between the staff telling the staff to change the, what the subject was taught in to make it mandatory so parents were refused a right to, to take their child away. This was all came out clearly. Yes. Um, so, the, uh, you know, and, and, and telling the teachers to stop doing rainbows because now, you know, parents are beginning to see that the, this is, you know, about LGBT2 March. So let's pretend that it's more about other things. So we, we could clearly see, and this was not something that was hidden or we had to deduce and, and you know, pay an investigator for. This was clearly seen that the school was very much trying to force, you know, they said it openly, they were trying to teach LGBT and only when they came under fire, they decided to change everything around. I think then just moving on a little bit uh, later on when your um, sons um, really just seemed to be getting punished and uh, as a result of you raising this with the school. Um, but you went into a meeting, didn't you, with um, Atty Coleman Pappas, um, where she was wearing a T-shirt saying, why be homophobic, transphobic, racist? Correct. Yeah, even to this T-shirt, the idea that this could appropriately be worn by a staff member in a, in a school is the, is the first thing. Why was something like that being worn even in the first place? But then secondly, to come into a meeting with you and then for uh, Atty Coleman Pappas to tweet at around the same time when you exposed this, um, that uh, when a, there was a mock-up of it, she just tweeted out, I don't know why you'd be offended by the words on the T-shirt. I would be offended by somebody who wears a choker. Yes. The, yeah, yeah. She was so, more offended by the, the fact that the the person that was wearing the t-shirt in the in the, in, in the yeah, yeah the, was wearing a choker and and the apology that the judge focused on um, that well you know you got an apology so there's nothing to see here that that kind of attitude when you have been offended well you, uh, you, you were in that room that was what there was no apology at the time was there, and there in fact was, you got given a warning if you say if you say uh, you watch what you say otherwise well if there's any homophobic language you will this the meter, the meter would, it would end and and I think even the apology for the teacher it, again this double-sidedness in, in the courtroom they said that there was nothing wrong with the t-shirt you, so you're apologizing for what if you don't think that there was anything wrong with the t-shirt but you, inappropriate but, but, they say it was it, inappropriate perhaps it was in a, perhaps it was inappropriate they said I mean I remembered when she was asked in the courtroom that she had worn it on several different occasions and no one ever had raised any issues with it of course only me the problem parent in the school raised a, a, a problem with it and it, therefore you know maybe an apology was given but again you know the, the judge who was very much heavily on side with the school even addressed the fact that there was a change of dress code, in, I believe, um, with the school. Something that no one would ever know of, or no yeah. one ever. So, but he is satisfied. Well, maybe, maybe, Izzy, you can be pleased that, as a result of this case, at least, that she's not that these T-shirts with slogans on can't be worn in the school. But let me say this. What's absolutely extraordinary is the pressure that was in that courtroom, isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, I was under fire and funny enough, it wasn't by the barrister, it was by the judge. You know, I never imagined in my life that I would be, you know, have to take a school to court and it would be the judge. Not the, not the, not the defence, you know, team, lawyers, it was the judge that was highly pressuring and in, in, in times insulting me on, on the stand, telling me I should change my views, gearing me into what I should say because he clearly showed a distaste to what my beliefs were. And then what we saw today was an application for costs, £75,000, with an invitation by the judge really to uh, go ahead and um, increase those in a sense, increase, in, increase those, or certainly... The, um, uh, counsel for the defence, Mr Clark, was, was indicated that he was going to try and increase those costs. But after that matter of closed, after the matter of costs had closed, um, the judge said, I hesitate to ask this, but who is really funding this? And I think what I want to say around that is this. We at Christian Concern, the Christian Legal Centre, we stand wholeheartedly with Izzy and for is he, and for this truth, and for justice. But let me say, what parent, what person 
can really seek access to justice with this kind of thread of costs that comes against them and all this adversity and all the length of time unless someone is assisting them, is someone is helping them. How is justice done unless people or friends stand beside you, Izzy? Again, I agree, you know, this is something that, you know, any parent would feel so scared to have to take on such a big burden, financial burden, of course, just to, to, just to live. And this is the injustice that we're facing, that as a parent, you have to take the school to court. This is not something that anybody would want to do, but you, this is what you have to do. And then after that, be People faced with say, such... People would say, why would you do it? Why would you go to court? Why would you actually go as far as going to court? You're a Christian. Why take your school to court? Because it's important. If I wouldn't be doing this you know, on my own back, but if it, this is the only way that you can be able to live your life, be free, and, and have your, your Christian beliefs, not just to, to walk down the street, but just to educate your child, to be a parent. And, and sadly, a ruling like this, is, in a way, is to send a message to say that you can't be a, a, a parent, you can't be a Christian parent. You definitely can't send your child to school and be a, a, a Christian parent and want your child to, to still have an education and to live in line with, with their faith. This ruling definitely shows that if you dare to challenge a school, you won't be able to, because you won't be able to afford to, to hit with the heavy burden of the financial cost. So it's better for you just to take what the school is throwing at you and whatever they want to, to, to teach and, and indoctrinate your child. Izzy, we're standing with you. This isn't over. We're going to appeal this because we um, need to demonstrate that you are free to live out your Christian faith to manifest your faith, to define for the world what really believing and living out faith means and why that can never just um, be one truth amongst many truths as the judge was seeming uh, to, to, say, uh, to say today and that really what was your problem, it was all okay, the prey was entirely consistent. No, we're going to have to take this further and we will take it further and I think I'm going to be um, with Isaiah at his graduation, but uh, I look forward to that in the years to come. <laughs>